What's up everyone? Midnight Stories 32 here. Today we're covering the darkest part of science and the terrible events that took place during the Stanford Prison Experiment. Before we get into the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. This small act will tell the YouTube algorithm to push our videos to new subscribers like yourself. This small gesture from you will mean so much for our channel growth. The Stanford Prison Experiment took place in the summer of 1971. The Stanford faculty designed one of the university's basements to resemble a prison, and even had steel cages installed. The experiment needed 24 participants, so Stanford placed ads in the local newspaper offering each participant $15 a day. Once the participants were selected, they each flipped a coin to see if they were assigned the role of a guard or a prisoner. The objective of this experiment was to study power dynamics. Dear God, this already sounds like a bad idea. The dirty experiment was led by Professor Philip Zambardo and his research team. The experiment was supposed to last for two weeks, but ended just after six days because of the shocking events that took place. Zimbardo wanted to make the experiment feel as real as possible so he could get real data from the experiment. On August 14, 1971, the first day of the experiment started. Zimbardo asked the local police department to lend a few of their officers to find and arrest the 12 participants that were selected as prisoners. They then took them to the newly converted prison located in the Stanford basement for booking and a good old-fashioned strip search. Each prisoner was deprived of their real names and assigned a number to be referred to throughout the duration of the experiment. The guards, on the other hand, they were told during orientation that they only had two rules. Don't hit the prisoners, and don't leave them in solitary confinement for over an hour. The experiment escalated quickly, and by the end of day one, one of the guards had already physically assaulted some of the prisoners. By day two, the prisoners were rioting because of the living conditions, and the guards had to spray the prisoners with fire extinguishers to de-escalate the situation. Just wait, it gets sketchier from here. On day three, prisoner 8612 had a psychological breakdown and was uncontrollably screaming and crying. He started telling the guards that he was afraid he would harm himself if he wasn't let go. Zimbardo, who was leading the experiment and acting as prison warden, decided it was within the prisoner's best interest to be let free. As you can see, the participants were embracing the roles quickly and causing the experiment to spiral out of control. The guards began verbally abusing and assaulting the prisoners. The troublemakers, well, they were restrained and even had black pillowcases placed over their heads. The inmates, unaccepting of the guards' behavior, started screaming at the guards while in their prison cells. They even went on hunger strikes in an act of defiance. On day five, Zimbardo's longtime girlfriend visited him at the site of the experiment and saw all the hateful things going on. She pled with Zimbardo to end the experiment or she'd break up with him. As tensions kept growing in the prison, Zimbardo finally came to his senses and decided to end the experiment on day six. So this begs the question, where are the prisoners in Zimbardo at today? None of the prisoners endured lifelong psychological problems, and Zimbardo has since come out and stated that he let the role of prison warden take over and run rampant. Regardless of the horrors that took place, there was still some light that shined through. The Stanford Prison Experiment was able to show the world about obedience and the abuse of power through a new lens. Please subscribe if you like this video and are interested in learning more about true stories. Until next time, Midnight Stories 32.